controlling the lead hand of Tyson Fury. Oh, he catches him off guard! Francis can happen! It just did! Floppy and Ngano just scored a knockdown! If he can draw him in here, instead it's the right hand behind the jab. From Tyson Fury starting to find his height. As he is fighting. Still undefeated from the United Kingdom, the WBC heavyweight world champion, the Gypsy King, Tyson Fury. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Um, I thought I would just do a quick video today on, on let's face it, this weekend of boxing's quite surprising um, turn of events. The uh, Tyson Fury versus Francis Ngannou, well, let's call it a fight, let's call it what it was. It was a mixed bag of drama that really happened. Now, let's just get it right off the bat. I'm... I've always been a uh, a Tyson Fury fan. Everything he's been through, where he's come from, you know, regards to mental health and so on. He can't help but uh, support the guy in that. And uh, Francis Ngannou, if you look at him, everything he's done in uh, MMA, UFC, he's done great. And also looking at back from Francis's uh, background, he's uh, done pretty good for himself as well. From coming, um, working in the mines, in Cameroon to then going to France and that's always a mean trip going to France and then joining an MMA, MMA dream MMA dream kind of get my words out today joining an MMA gym and then going on to become UFC champion and now having the biggest payday in his life incredible but we're not here to talk about their backgrounds let's talk about the fight now now look first things first the event itself was interesting. I mean, one thing about the Saudis, they've got money and they're not afraid to show it off. So, you know, the event itself, it looked good, but oh my God, did that fight take ages to start? Just went on the, the little intros to it because, because what happened was the, before the ring walk was going to be at 10 o'clock, um, UK time that is, 10 o'clock UK time. Then it changed to 10.45. And then, because we were watching it in a bar in Leicester, represent, and what happened was, we were watching it, just, you know, thinking, okay, fight's going to start. And then some weird music concert was coming on. Yeah, it looked good. It looked, just looked like a, some Eurovision con, you know, concert was on. But it just, it just went on and on and on. And then my mate said, look, I can't be asked waiting. And I said, look, shall we just go back to mine? I'll book the fight now. We'll head back to mine and watch it. And he goes, I mean, will we have time? Well, we did, because I booked the fight. We got back home, called the Uber. We got back in, took us about 10 minutes to get home. The fight, they hadn't even walked out yet. And this is like nearly, this is about half 11 by this point. And so when they eventually walked out, it was, uh, it was interesting. You know, they had great entrances and all that like that. That was great. Now, the fight, how it panned out, those of you who saw it, we all know what happened. There's no point in me going into massive detail about what happened in the fight. Because a lot of you know what happened. You know, the third round, um, which it stunned everybody because Francis Ngannou knocked down Tyson Fury. That happened. And at the end of the fight, Tyson... One thing I noticed that Tyson wasn't controlling the sense of the ring at all. It was Francis Ngannou was doing it. And this is probably one of the worst performances I've ever seen from Tyson Fury throughout his whole career. Not even, um, you know, in recent days. This is for his whole career. This is probably the worst, one of the worst performances I've ever seen. But um, he got the decision. A split decision win. Done. Then that's the end of that. Or is it? No. Because... At the end of that fight, Tyson, um, you know, he this talks about him obviously fighting Usyk. That's the fight. Even now, we still that's the fight we want to see in the in boxing in the heavyweight division. That's the fight we want to see. We want to see Tyson versus Usyk. Uh, well, Tyson Fury, not Mike Tyson. But Tyson Fury versus Usyk. But the problem is that um, 
Now, I, I got in this little spat over some guy on a Facebook picture. Brilliant. Um, because it's, he, what we're starting to see is a lot of Tyson Fury fans, um, they're very much defending the decision. And to be fair, when the fight gets that close, and that's, do you know what the thing is though? The fight was, it was a close split decision win for Fury. Now, if we compare the two, Tyson Fury is the WBC heavyweight champion of the world. He's been fighting for many, many years. Quite a decorated career. He's done pretty good for himself. He's undefeated. You know, he's he's beaten some great fighters in the ring. Yeah. Francis Ngannou, an amazing MMA fighter. Done great in his career. The, this is the first time Ngannou has fought in a professional boxing ring. And now there's two ways to look at this, really. If you look at it from the Ngannou point of view, this is a guy who is an MMA fighter, who then um, had a long MMA career, who then decided at the age of 37 to do his pro boxing debut. And what is his pro boxing debut? He decides to jump in the ring with the heavyweight champion of the world. He then knocks down the heavyweight champion in the third round. He then goes toe to toe with the heavyweight champion and then ends up narrowly losing by one point on a split decision. Whoa, props to the guy. That is, now that is the Rocky story. That is the, the underdog managing to do it. Yeah, it's truly inspirational. Let's look at it on the other end. Tyson Fury, you got the heavyweight champion of the world who's won the title, lineal champion, done some amazing stuff in the sport, um, undefeated. He then ends up fighting a guy who's an MMA fighter. He fights him in a boxing ring. First time this MMA fighter's ever fought in the boxing ring. This MMA fighter then makes the world heavyweight champion. He knocks him down. The world champion boxer gets knocked down in the third round. He then has, the, then Tyson Fury has a close uh, fight with this MMA fighter. And he only just wins against this guy who's never fought in a boxing ring before by one point on a split decision. I mean, I don't want to say it's embarrassing, but it, it doesn't bode well. And also it doesn't look good on the sport itself because it's like, it just kind of becomes clear that if Ungarnu hadn't, if he had knocked Fury out, yeah, that's the only way he would have won this fight. Going to a decision, it was always going to go to Fury. That was, that's the, you know, the bottom line on that. Now, in the boxing world, they're all, a lot of them try to say, yeah, Fury won, Fury won. Obviously, all MMA people are just going to say that Ngannou won. They're going to defend him to high heaven. But at the end of the day, it's, the way I look at it, personally, is that the um, Francis Ngannou, put up one hell of a performance achieved much better than that like, I was one of those who thought that he'll do well to start off with but then by the fifth or sixth round the it'll catch up with him and then Fury will just use his jab pick him off and maybe finish him in the eighth or ninth round that's what will happen I couldn't have been more wrong I was so wrong and it in, and one thing I will say it's one of those occasions where we want to see a competitive fight. We love to see competitive fights. And this was a competitive fight. That is no bones about it. When, um, I, one of the main disappointments I had from, say, when Tyson Fury fought Dylan White, I didn't feel Dylan White was, in, was as competitive as I thought he could have been. When he fought Chisora for the third occasion, we knew what that was going to be. That was a foregone conclusion, and it just turned out to be exactly what we wanted it. Well, what we wanted it, but what, exactly what we thought it was going to be. This one was a weird one, because now, if Ungarnu gets into the ring with someone else, he's still quite unknown. We know he's got power, but we, we still don't know a lot about his technique. We know that he's got a better gas tank than we thought, but, um, and I think... One of the main dangers, and I think this is what Fury found when he got in close to Ungarnu, because Ungarnu's an MMA guy, getting in close, you're going to be in danger. That's his, that's his territory. That's his realm. You've got to pick him off from distance. And also, it was incredible to see uh, Ungarnu throw a Superman punch. That was brilliant. 
bloody brilliant. I mean, it didn't land, but he, he, the fact that he had the fact that Ngannou in the tenth round had the balls to do that, it means that Fury gave him way too much respect. Now, should they run it again? I mean, for a fan's sake, I'd say, yay, let's run it again. But I think if they ran it again, I think Fury will come in there and be a, lot, a hell of a lot smarter than he was in this last fight. He will just do everything to negate and put down. Um, Fury will do everything to kind of um, just minimise the amount of damage that uh, Nganu can do. Because he knows that um, Francis now can hurt him. He knows that. So he's going to do everything. He's, he's got to remember, how many, whatever skills uh, Francis has in the boxing ring, Tyson has 20 more. It's the same on the flip side. If Whatever skill Tyson would have in an MMA, um, in the octagon, Ngannou would have 20 more. That's the difference. And there's no way this is going to become a, a they'll, they'll go in the cage. There's no way. Because if it was MMA, this fight would probably be over in one minute. If Ngannou was able to do that to um, Fury in his own sport, in Fury's own sport, what the hell would Ngannou do to Fury in his sport? You know, so it's just, there's no way, no way they'll do an MMA fight. And, and the thing is, a lot of people are saying that, oh, if this was a real fight, Ngannou would win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably so. But that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter when it comes to this. This is a boxing match. This is, you know, the art of self-defense. This is the sweet science. This is what that is. And Fury, unfortunately, gave himself a very bad showing. And in doing so, really made the sport of boxing look kind of bad. Now, what do we, where, where do we go from here? I think Fury and Usyk, that has to happen. That, that just has to happen now. Fury has to just go in there. He has to try and beat Usyk. Just to get his rep back up again. Does he have to fight Ngannou again? I don't think he has to. I don't think he has to for his career. Obviously money-wise, he doesn't have to fight anybody now. He's made so much money from this last fight. Both of them could literally just retire right now if they wanted to. But, um, oh God, imagine retiring in your 30s. Oh, I'd love to do that. Um, but yeah, could... Uh, will they... Does Fury need to continue to fight on? That's up to him. That's up to him, but does he have to fight Ungarno again? I don't say he has to, in terms of monetary wise or reputation. Well, actually, no. In terms of reputation wise, he probably does have to fight Ungarno and beat him quite convincingly, just to get his rep there, just to kind of show that. Oh yeah, that was kind of a fluke that Ungarno did that. But then it could be a case of you never know. Ungarno just might know the the formula how to take on Fury. As many fighters have struggled to do so, and Garnu found the formula. And that some other guy came up with some argument to me. He goes, um, he goes, oh, well, the, you can't question Ngarnu's power because you know Wilder's got a lot of power in his in his hands. So it's like Wilder and Ngarnu. Yeah, but that's a stupid point to make because Wilder's power is completely focused on boxing. He knows how to utilize his power in boxing. Ngannou is a guy who, who's been trained to utilize his power in MMA. It's a different discipline. So, but it, it, but he managed to utilize it here in boxing. It doesn't mean that, you know, so that's not to say that. So if Wilder went in to do MMA, that doesn't mean that suddenly his power would be just as good because it'd be used in a different way. It's just that, but what it did show is that Ngannou's got a lot more skill than we thought. You know, he said in an interview, I think it was Radio Rahim or so. I don't know who it was with, but he said that he did used to box, you know, beforehand. He's he's done boxing before, but he's mostly been training. He's never competed, but he's done it before. But yeah, I just think Ngannou has just got everything to be proud of. Fury needs to go back to the drawing board on this one. Maybe next time just taking a big money fight is not the smart thing to do. In the future, just uh, just fight who you're meant to fight. Just go out there, fight Usyk, and let's see who is going to be the you know unified champion. That's all we want to see. We don't really care about any of these exhibitions or all these type of things. We don't care about those. We just want to see you get in the ring with Usyk and get it done. All right? So that's uh, that's all I have to say on that, really. But um, yeah, but I enjoyed it.
I'm not gonna lie, I enjoyed it. It was much better than the KSI, Tommy Fury, and the Logan Paul, Dylan Dennis fights. They were a bag of shit, really. But uh, to be fair, but those were the event was entertaining, but the fights were a bit there. Here, the event was a bit. What is all this? But the fight was entertaining, so that was it. That's why I got to say I was entertained by this fight. That's one thing I got to do. I got my money's worth from that fight. That's all I got to say. Well, it's pain for pay per view ever, ever getting your money's worth, but yeah, it is what it is. Okay, take care, everyone. Peace.